Starting lineups tonight, first running the show for Kansas State will be Corilla Middlebrook. She's a 5'7 junior from Blue Springs. Head of guard, Kendrick Wiesman out of Pleasant Hill, Missouri. She leads him in scoring along with Brianna Lewis, who goes in the middle tonight, the 6'5 senior from Milwaukee. Shailen Martin is out at a guard spot tonight from Salina, Kansas, 6'1 a junior. And then also uh, going tonight is Kaylee Page, 6'3 a junior from Wamego, Kansas, in place of Eternity Wheelock, who is out sick tonight for the... Uh, Lady Raiders tonight, they'll be led uh, by Rase Caldwell, the 5'8 sophomore. Also, Ivan Cook-Taylor, the 5'8 senior, is out there at a guard spot. Arella Garantes, the 5'11 freshman who has eight points of ball game in Big 12 play, go here in the middle. And they decide to go with the big lineup here against Kansas State. They've gone small because of the matchups against Kansas. So always, you know, seeing what the opponent brings at you. And I think it's a good matchup for this group. All right, the ball's in the air. Our starting line is brought to us by American Campus Communities. America's Campus Communities, where students love living. And we're underway here at United Supermarkets Arena. You know, and I'm not sure how soon before the game, the Texas Tech coaching staff knew that Eternity Willock would not be available for Kansas State. She did not make the trip, and so that may affect how uh, Texas Tech decides to play them and defend them because that's a player that was playing extremely well for Kansas State lately. I think one thing the Lady Raiders are looking to do here early on is have energy and have some spark, and you at least see a more spirited group than maybe what we saw Sunday or Saturday morning slash afternoon at Allen Fieldhouse. Well, offensive foul for Brewer to get started. K-State, a good defensive team, and Brewer back in the starting lineup trying to be aggressive but commits the offensive foul. Wiesman, who uh, averages 14 points a ball game, she and Brianna Lewis lead this K-State team in scoring. They love to get it into the paint. 48% of their points come from in the paint, and missing and getting a good rebound there is Arella Garantis, and Arella uh, has been slowed by an ankle injury, so they're looking to see how strong she can be tonight and see if the strength of that ankle will hold up and allow her to get the power off of her shot that she's been needing. So it looks like a diamond and one, no, actually a triangle and two. So both Caldwell and Garantes are being face guarded while the other three defenders for Kansas State are playing the other three offensive players. So right now, both the players that are being face guarded for Texas Tech are standing out on the perimeter. We'll watch how that adjusts. Wiesman shooting and missing and another rebound for Arella Garantes. They feel like Jada Terry can have a big night tonight. They'll try to get it into the middle to her. She missed a bunny just a few minutes ago, but they look for her to have a good night tonight. So they'll reset the deck here between the circles and try to get it into Brittany Brewer, who has terrific hands, fouled on the play, and she'll be going to the free throw line shooting a couple. So the keys for Texas Tech today... Candy Whitaker talked to us about the fact that a full 40 minutes of effort. They haven't been starting well. They need to play hard all 40 minutes in Big 12 play. And against the junk or triangle and two or diamond and one or different defenses they see, they have to be patient but aggressive. On the other end, Kansas State really feels like they need to control tempo because if Texas Tech gets in an up-and-down game, they are much more free-flowing and better. And they need to own the boards. Kansas State has won every game this year that they've out-rebounded their opponents. So that is their goal, to keep Texas Tech off the boards. So Brewer gets them both. Those are the first two points of the basketball game as Wiesman's cut off on the baseline by Arilla Garantis, stolen away by Yvonne Cook-Taylor. See if she stops and pops and does and got it. Yvonne Cook-Taylor with an early two, and that's the kind of thing that they need out of her to get her going early, and Jeff Mitty doesn't like what he saw. He wants to take a timeout. You're watching Texas Tech basketball. To knock it down and give the Lady Raiders a 4-0 lead early, guys. Well, and it forced Kansas State to call the timeout because they've been running that triangle in two, and Cook-Taylor has an opportunity to, to get some offense against that. She is not being defended closely. The triangle is part of what's defending her, and she pulled up in transition, made a good choice. Kansas State has to figure out how to stop her in transition. They try to force it inside. It's batted out. They try to go back inside, and it's through the wicket there for Brianna Lewis. And Brianna Lewis is a player that doesn't make many mistakes. She no. averages 14 points a ball game, had 10 and 11 rebounds the last time the Lady Raiders and Kansas State hooked up. And she uh, also is a player that has 40 blocks on the season. So she leads them in block shots. She sees all everything for them. Inside, Brittany Brewer off the glass. Good. And there you see the great hands that the Lady Raiders have. Stolen on the inbound. 
rebounds by Garantis. Garantis dribbling around, puts up the shot, no good. Trying to get the rebound, can't. And it comes down to Shaylin Martin. Oh, a golden opportunity missed there for the Lady Raiders. Good energy, good hustle for Texas Tech here mm -hmm. in the opening minutes of this game. Kansas State already with three turnovers early. The shot is up, no good, and underneath, and coming down with it is Arilla Garantis. I mean, how often do you see that ball ricochet like that and a player able to come up with it? Ivan with a three ball, no good. Rebound comes down to Shaylin Martin. Good energy. This is as good an energy uh, burst that we've seen for the Lady Raiders, I think, in Big 12 play, Brendan. I think one thing, too, folks should know is the Lady Raiders have yet to lead at the end of one period of play hmm. in Big 12 play. Yeah, and, and they just haven't gotten those good starts. So you can see that Candy Whitaker has been very much reinforcing to this team 40 minutes. You can't wait to start against these great Big 12 opponents. Wiesman missing in the lane. Rebound Texas Tech. Outlet to Garantis. She'll look for Cook Taylor in the corner, but doesn't find her. Now Brittany Martin. She'll step up from the free throw line. Boom. She's a 61% free throw shooter, and essentially she's gone three for three from the line tonight. Yeah, she certainly has. Brittany Brewer with a terrific shot there from the free throw line. Just could, took a couple dribbles into it to get some rhythm. All right, uh, from the baseline, it's up and it is in for Kaylee Page. <laughs> Kaylee Page averages 6.6 .6 a ball game in Big 12 play. She's playing in place tonight from a starting standpoint in place of Eternity Wheelock. And, you know, she's a gal that's out sick at home tonight. Uh, averaging almost nine points a game in Big 12 play, so that's a player that they'll miss. But Kaylee Page can do something Whitlock, Willock can't because she's a three-point shooter, and so she can stretch that matchup zone for Texas Tech. Turnover on the Lady Raiders. This, this goes through the hands of Brittany Brewer, and now you'll have some substitutions for Kansas State. Peyton Williams will check into the game. Kayla Goff will check into the game as well. And also coming in is Jessica Schiebel. She's from Olathe, 6'3", a senior. All right, Wiesman, just outside, cut off by Brewer. And the baseline down they go underneath, and it's an easy little layup there for Peyton Williams. Nice pick and roll executed for Kansas State. Poor communication that time for Texas Tech. No rotation over to help out on the backside. So K-State on a little bit of a run here. Lady Raiders are up 6-0 and now lead by just 3-8-5 and turnover and the ball goes back to Kansas State. So it worked early for Texas Tech to get that high-low path, but now they've forced it a few times. Kansas State has adjusted. You have to, you have to figure that a tough Big 12 team that's known for their defense like Kansas State, they're going to make adjustments. So you can't look to do the same thing over and over. If they're, if they're taking it away, you have to look for another option. Fouls on Rasay Caldwell. That is her first and into the ball game for Texas Tech, Dial Lavodi. She loves to shoot the three balls. She loves to come in and get big rebounds. She's been very effective when she's had minutes to play this year. And she had a big game against Kansas mm -hmm. State on the road. She had three three-pointers in a row in the third quarter against their various defenses. So I'm sure that's a big reason why she's in the game. And Lewis, Brianna Lewis right now is out of the lineup for Kansas State, so Jada Terry can take a break. Again, the corner shot is up and it is in for Peyton Williams. They had struggles hanging on to the basketball, but K-State was very patient there. Did not get rattled with the ball just kind of rolling all over the floor and able to get it to Peyton Williams, who hits it. And Williams had her only double-figure game of Big 12 play against Texas Tech when they played in Manhattan earlier this year. She had 10 points and five rebounds. There's uh, Garantis driving the boulevard from the left-hand side and hits it. Arella playing, I think, much stronger tonight than what we've seen the last couple of games. She hurt her ankle right before they were traveling to play at Oklahoma. Lady Raiders lost that game. She did not play in that game, and she's been suffering from that effect since then, but looks much stronger tonight. Goff in the lane. Nope, and she is fouled by Garantis. That'll be the third team foul on Texas Tech. So Goff putting the ball on the floor. Garantes just reaching over. Not a good foul, though. You don't want to foul a jump shooter. This is a player in Goff that averages about six points a game. She only scored two points the last time these two met up. Make her earn that shot. She's there. Make her earn the jumper. Don't send her to the free throw line. 68% free throw shooter. She's averaging 6.2 points a game overall and three in Big 12 play. Checking out is Kaylee Page. And also uh, checking into the ballgame today is Ayanna McKenzie. She did not play at Kansas. She comes in for Brittany Brewer. 
I think Kenny Whitaker is looking for this continued energy, making sure everybody's fresh out there. They understand what to do against the zones and the defenses that Kansas State puts out against them. They were hustling for that rebound. You saw two or three Lady Raiders right there. Garantis from the corner, no good, missing. And there's a whistle and a foul. And it's going to be on Arella Garantis, and that's going to be her second. Pretty even on the board so far. We mentioned that every time Kansas State out rebounds their opponent, they win the game. A nice block out, block out on Garantes, block out on the perimeter. And that's where, you know, they're known for their, their various zone looks. And sometimes it's not e always easy to rebound out of a zone, although they do out rebound their opponents by a little under four rebounds per game. So they need to block out to have success against Texas Tech. Laren Brooks now in the ball game for Texas Tech as well. She is number five. They try to go inside, but can't. Here's Williams. Williams against Grayson Bright, and she puts it up and in. Grayson just checked into the ball game too. Williams, a 6'3 freshman, only a freshman at 6'3 and had the height advantage there. K State has yet to lead in this basketball game. Lady Raiders have led throughout. Ola Bode almost lost the handle on it, struggling to hang on to it. Goes in the corner to Grayson. She puts it up and no good. Just a little too strong in the rebound to Brianna Lewis. Lewis with a nice block out on the backside. It looked like she had been pushed under a little bit, but with her length and her strength, she went up strong to get the rebound. She averages eight a game, and she averages seven and a half rebounds a game in Big 12 play. Again, inside the paint, they go to Goth. The six-foot sophomore from DeForest, Wisconsin, puts it up and in, and K-State has its first lead of the ballgame. Really. And, and I think Jeff Mitty has to like the way they've been patient against the Texas Tech defense and how they've been aggressive in their attack. For say Caldwell's first shot of the game, she goes up left-handed, missing. You see her right wrist is taped. She's had a little bit of a struggle with it. Brianna Lewis with another rebound here for Kansas State. But she looks taller than 6'5". <laughs> Again, to the corner they go to Peyton Williams, and Candy Whitaker doesn't like it. She is going to take a timeout and talk about this and talk about how they can do a better job of defending that corner because that's like the third time. Well, it's a matchup zone. Caused some problems. Now, against the matchup zone on this end, you got to keep people in front of you, and so far, Kansas State's been able to put the ball on the floor and get around those guards up top, and that's caused some problems defensively for the Lady Raiders. All right, Grayson Bright with the basketball and the left-hand dribble almost has it knocked away from her. Ivon Cook Taylor wisely goes down low on the baseline, puts up the shot, no good. Rebound Kansas State. Really, it's one and done right now for the Lady Raiders. If they're not making them, they're missing them, and uh, Kansas State's getting the rebound. Yeah, they've done a nice job, Kansas State, blocking out and limiting the Lady Raiders to one shot. Laney Page now in the game. She'll try to dump it down to Brianna Lewis. She steps back, puts up the shot, no good. Rebound, fought four, and then pulled away with by Ivon Cook Taylor. Boy, Brianna Lewis makes 57% of her shots. She's not going to miss a lot at point-blank range like she just did. And Cook Taylor the same way. She's gotten an open look now on the baseline and a nice drive to the rim. She needs to finish on those shots for the Lady Raiders. Yeah, and just went in a little bit too strong there. Pull up by Wiesman. No good. Rebound. Two Lady Raiders are there, and one of them comes away with it. It's uh, Zuri Sanders who's just checked in. Zuri spent a lot of time in non-conference play rehabbing her left knee. She injured it this past summer, had ACL surgery, came back and started to play here in Big 12 play and has been uh, terrific. She had a terrific game against West Virginia, and Zuri hits it there from just outside the, the paint on the uh, high low. You know, I think that's a shot Jeff Mitty is probably willing to concede. He would let Sanders have that shot, and she's got to take advantage of it, and she did. Zuri's a terrific player, six foot a sophomore. Didn't uh, play the last time these two teams played. Page with the three ball, no good, missing. And Jada Terry with a rebound. And Texas Tech changed it up a little bit. They were face guarding Kindred Wiesman that time and not allowing her to get a touch on the basketball. May have done that the last couple of times. Laren Brooks had nine points in the fourth quarter and tried to spark a comeback Saturday against Kansas, going in the paint there and hitting it. Lady Raiders with a 14-13 lead here as we get towards the end of the first quarter in Kansas State will play for the final shot. Martin to Lewis, trying to hang on to it. They go back outside to Page, no good. Rebound goes out of bounds, and they'll say it was off of Laren Brooks. With a nice double team on Lewis, didn't give her an easy look, recovered to the three-point shooter, but couldn't get the rebound. Kansas State will inbound with a second left on the clock. Let's see if they get the shot off. It 
doesn't go in, and it wouldn't have counted anyway. We've completed one period of play. Texas Tech leads for the first time in Big 12 play after one period of play, 14-13. You're watching Texas Tech TV. Kansas State did have some opportunities in there, but it was good defense by the Lady Raiders. Lady Raiders will go with Brittany Brewer, Jada Terry, Ivan Cook-Taylor, Rasay Caldwell, and Laren Brooks will throw it in at midcourt. So Rose Caldwell has yet to score tonight. She and Garantes went two for 16 combined against Kansas the other day, and the Lady Raiders lost. Missing there at the first shot of the second quarter is Avon Cook Taylor. You know, and I like the confidence that Cook Taylor shoots with, but I think she could get that same shot later in the shot clock if they move the ball just a little bit more. Lewis and Wiesman, the two seniors that we highlighted in the open, have not scored yet. And finally, on an offensive rebound and put back, Lewis does. She's just one of four from the field in the early going. All right, let's go to Adam on the sideline. Yeah, guys, coming out of the uh, first quarter there, Coach Whitaker was happy with the energy of her team. She said, guys, you have a good motor right now. I like the way we're playing. Keep it up. She also said offensively, let's keep pounding it inside to Brewer and Terry. We've had good matchups there. We see that right now as Brewer puts up the shot and misses. She also said on the defensive end, Williams for them, four for four right now. She's got eight points. She's been everything for them offensively. Put a body on her, makes somebody else beat us, guys. Well, the, the inside matchup between Brianna Lewis and Jada Terry is getting very physical. You saw it just a moment ago from the offensive standpoint at K-State, and now on that the sequence of plays with Jada Terry picking up the foul, her first and the team's first here in the second quarter. On well, night in and night out in the Big 12 Conference, there are big, strong post players. More than any conference in the country, almost every team has at least one, if not multiple, big players inside. And Shaylin Martin is a player that complements Brianna Lewis well. She can stretch out to that high post. She gets a lot of rebounds. She's a good defender, a good complement to Brianna Lewis. K-State with its biggest lead of the ball game at three, and that shot by Martin just a moment ago over Laren Brooks looked just too easy. Oh. And a travel is going to be called on Jada Terry. Well, that's too bad because that was a nice move. A little head and shoulder fake. Got the shot blocker up in the air. She, she just would not have had the happy feet. She would have had a nice, easy basket at the rim. Lady Raiders have missed some opportunities here early on inside the paint and at the bucket. And as a result, a trail here by three points as we get to uh, about the eight-minute mark here of the second quarter. Kansas State trying to... Mm -hmm. See if they can get the ball back outside. They do to Paige. She misses badly. Rebound. Jada Terry swings the elbows around. She's clearly agitated here a little bit, and that's not a bad thing if you're a Lady Raider fan. Cook Taylor from the baseline three counter. Cook Taylor, that's only her fourth three-pointer of the year. As Adam mentioned earlier, long twos are her game, and that time stepped just outside the three-pointer and hit a big one for the Lady Raiders. She had three against Kansas. Not only were those her first three, those were her first three attempts. K-State bothered by this Texas Tech defense, trying to work it inside. They'd love to do that. Ball was stolen, intercepted by Ivon Cook-Taylor. She's off to a great start. And to say Caldwell and cannot hang on to the pass in front of Jeff Petty. Oh, and she said, my fault. It just went right through her hands. I don't know if that hand is bothering her so much that she just really couldn't clamp down. Nope, oh, now Candy Whitaker sends her back into the game. Or if she just took her eyes off it. But uh, Cook Taylor takes a seat. And Texas Tech again. Interesting to see what defense they're actually running. They have been disguising it well. It's been hard to tell exactly what they're in as they look to be chasing around, but that looks like it was supposed to be a zone because I think Jada Terry was looking for help on the backside on that. Jada just had her slip right by her, could not afford a second foul. Garantes puts up the shot, and she is going to be fouled by Brianna Lewis, and she'll go to the free throw line looking for a couple. So when you put the ball on the floor and attack, good things are going to happen. And that's a great job by the freshman. Attacking a shot blocker, you want to take the ball right at a shot blocker because a player like Brianna Lewis, she wants to get it. She wants to get a piece of it. And she's going to go after it. And Garanta is really challenging her to give herself a chance at the free throw line. Garanta is an 88% free throw shooter. Lady Raiders has done a good job from the free throw line here in the early going as they're uh, perfect. Four for four, or three for three, and uh, Garantis will try to make it four for four. And she does. All right, 
but this is Corella Middlebrook. She's out of Blue Springs, Missouri, averages 11 points a ball game, actually averaging more in Big 12 play than she is for all games this year. It's about a uh, 3.6 rebounder, but has been a pretty good effective player uh, running the show for Kansas State. Yeah, transfer from Alabama. It took her a while to get used to the system. Well, I thought there was a double dribble there, but... Or wow. maybe even a travel, and there's uh, a foul that's called. Boy, that is a big bailout for Kansas State because they would have had a shot clock violation because nobody was going toward the rim. And in the scramble for the loose ball, that's where, yeah, Olabodi reached in and grabbed her arm, and the shot clock was on one. It would have been a shot clock violation. On the inbound, they try to work it into Shebo. It's deflected by Laren Brooks, and the Lady Raiders pull away with it. Let's see if Dio can dial one up, because she likes to shoot the three ball. Well, a pass that's intercepted here by Martin. She'll go coast to coast when she lay it up. No, it's blocked out of bounds by Laren Brooks, a terrific defensive play. They hustle back and get back on transition defense. Laren Brooks brings so many plays and uh, may, may have got a little piece of the arm. That's what Shaylin Martin turned around and said, but she was so fast up the court and quick getting by her to be disruptive. May have gotten away with one there. Middlebrook on the inbounds and it's no good. Another rebound there for Arilla Garantes. And how about Garantes was on the floor, stood up, got the rebound to go. That's that's some extra effort. Garantes with the shot, no good. Again, three K-State players there blocking out and getting the defensive rebound thanks to Middlebrook. Middlebrook will try to penetrate on the baseline and denied by Rasay Caldwell. To Schiebel, off the glass, good over Rella And Schiebel's just got a height advantage over most of these Lady Raiders. You know, and, and her Big 12 high on the season is four points. She doesn't score a lot of points, but she's always so steady. And throughout her career, she has always just been a steady role player that comes in and does her job. Brewer can't save the rebound, and it goes right into the hands of Kylie Page. Or Kaylee Page, rather, I should say. And now Sheba will try to drive against Ola Bodie. Kicks it out to Middlebrook. Middlebrook looks for help. They'll reset the offense. Durantes zoned in on her. It's her responsibility to stay with Middlebrook wherever she goes. And Caldwell is staying with Page. Back to Page. Page to Middlebrook. Middlebrook will drive in there and missing. Rebound comes down to Sheba. Or oh, there's a jump ball for it and a tie-up. All right, it's 4.51 to go here in the second quarter. The Lady Rails trail by two. You're watching Texas Tech TV on Fox. During the 40 years of leadership sales event and see why Ford is the best in Texas. All right, Candy Whitaker, Jeff Mitty, they have both uh, instructed their charges with what they would like for them to do. Kansas State will throw it in bounds here. And they'll try to look at and get it inside, but denied by... Dio Olabodi and Dio is going to pull away with a rebound, but before there's a foul. Let's see if the foul is on Peyton Williams. It is. So Olabodi with a better block out this time and just scrambling for the loose ball. A foul committed there from Williams. Williams, who has been a starter most of the year, but has been coming off the bench the last couple of games. We've seen her have a great start already, kind of motivated coming off the bench, being able to see things first before she gets out there. There's Dow Lavoni with the three, and she is money in the bank. She was zoned in on that like radar and dialed it up for Texas Tech. K-State knows very well how well she can shoot from three-point range, but she caught it with just enough cushion. You talk about being number one in Big 12 play in terms of shooting. Dao Labodi is 61% yeah. from three-point land. Yeah, I didn't even mention her as I was reeling off everybody. And here is uh, Middlebrook with a K-State jumper there to kind of quiet the crowd a little bit. And that's her first basket of the game, and she's been pretty steady. She's averaging almost nine points a game where I did their UConn game earlier this year. At that time, she was only averaging four points a game. So you can see how much she's brought up her average since the middle of non-conference. Iona McKenzie goes inside to put up the shot. Had to struggle around with it, missing. I believe that is her first missed shot of the year. <laughs> that's probably right. I mean, she hasn't taken very many, but I think that's her first missed shot of the year. And Middlebrook will reset the offense for Kansas State. Wiesman, who had 34 against Oklahoma State on Saturday, 
Hasn't going scored against, any today. Yeah, going up against Grayson Bright there, and there's a whistle and a foul. Well, it's been a couple of different players have had the assignment for Texas Tech to not allow Wiesman to get the ball, and Grayson Bright is staying with her. She ends up getting a forearm up on her and commits the foul. Jenna Cross, the official under the basket, calling that right away. But I'm sure that... Candy Whitaker has instructed whoever is defending Wiesman, and right now it's Laren Brooks, that you don't let her get the ball. She just went off for 34, and there she gets a nice backdoor cut because they were denying her so hard out on the perimeter. And gets the reverse layup to give Kansas State a three-point lead here with three minutes to go in the second quarter. Cook Taylor missing from three, and the rebound to Kansas State. Middlebrook. Back to Wiesman. Went inside to Brianna Lewis with a hook shot there, and it is good over Jada Terry. She has got some time out. Jada Terry has had some time out to rest. And so those two bigs going back at it, and that's really the signature shot for Brianna Lewis. She can go with her right or her left, but loves that hook shot. She has six points. She's three for six from the field today. Back to Jada Terry, who goes back up against Brianna Lewis, works around her, puts the shot up, hits the iron underneath the rim, and the ball goes out of bounds. That's going up against the 6-5 and the long arm reach of Brianna Lewis. It is tough to go around her. That's what, if you can get her up in the air first, make a little fake and go up and under, that's the idea, but... She got under a little too far, Jada Terry, and got herself right under the rim and didn't have anywhere to go with it. Into the ballgame, Brittany Brewer, and Dial Lavodi checks out for the Lady Raiders. Here's Wiesman. Cannot put it down from three. Rebound is loose and on the floor, and pulling away with it is Avon Cook Taylor. The Lady Raiders getting a loose ball rebound there to the Grantis in the corner. Ball fake. Well, I thought Texas Tech had some numbers there. It looked like they had three on two, and Cook Taylor decided to pull it out and go out to the perimeter instead of attacking the rim. I think they could have taken advantage of the numbers. Brittany Brewer with a nice left-handed shot there from the right side. And that's what you want to do against a shot blocker, too. If you don't want to take it right at her, a little step back. And that was a nice job of creating space so she got a good look at the basket. I think the thing to remember, you know, from Texas Tech's perspective, is Brittany Brewer just a freshman. Oh, yeah. And Arilla Garantis just a freshman. There's a lot of bright future there for the Lady Raiders. And now Brianna Lewis is in a rhythm, so it's very important that Texas Tech keep the ball out of her hands because she has made her last couple of shots in a row. She's in a rhythm. She's shooting off that one foot with her hook shot. And Jada Terry right behind the free throw line. And really what you want to do is you want to make sure if you're not leading at the half that you're not down by seven or so so that it doesn't look like that all your hard work is wasted. And I think you want to go into the halftime with a positive feeling and being in this particular spot, I would think that they would feel good about it. Obviously, they want to lead, but they certainly don't want to let K-State go on a little bit of a run here at the end of the second quarter. Well, their defense has been good overall. Again, keeping the ball out of Lewis and Wiesman's hand a priority. Middlebrook missing. Rebound comes down to Ivonne Cook-Taylor. Let's see if she can put one up at the buzzer as Laren Brooks goes to Jada Terry and she misses inside. Oh, that was unfortunate. Wiesman and I got confused that I looked at the, the zero the six. I, yeah, I looked at the shot clock there and I apologized for that. And then I saw the game clock was still at 30. I think maybe uh, the Lady Raiders might have had the same thing happen as they rushed the shot a little bit too much. Seven seconds. Here's Wiesman. Wiesman puts up the shot. No good. Jada Terry with the loose ball rebound. Now there's problematic seconds remaining. Larry Brooks will put it up from past half court. Hits the front of the rim. It is no good. And we're going to go to Adam Doyle here in just a second. She'll have, he'll have Lady Raider head basketball coach Candy Whitaker and get her thoughts. By Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. And we're set to go here at United Supermarkets Arena for the third period of play. Lady Raiders and Kansas State both employing the original five as they try to go down low to Ivan Cook. Taylor steps underneath the lane and hits it little short little fall away there on the baseline perfect play they're drawn up by the Lady Raiders well and the first play of the game is a play that Jeff Mitty in practice today said we know they're gonna do it to us and they got him right out of the halftime locker room Kaylee Page running right towards the bucket hits the left-handed shot there looked like she might have taken an extra step but she gets the two and K-State 
maintains its lead. Well, it was a nice answer back after Texas Tech scored on the first play. So how about this? Three possessions, three scores. And Brittany Brewer now in double figures with 10 points, maybe having her birth best 30 minutes of basketball here so far in the basketball game. She's been very smooth, and she's really taking advantage of her opportunities. Into Brianna Lewis, misses the shot, but right there, Johnny on the spot is... K-State with a couple of shots out of his page cannot get it to go down. Boy, and she and missed a couple of opportunities. She did. Point blank rage, range, and you can tell she was frustrated after. Into Terry. Let's see if Jada can put up the shot. Missing, no good. Rebound comes down to Kaylee Page. Jada went up with a left hand there. Because she's around so many left handers, she mm -hmm. finally tried to serve, decided to try it herself. See how it went. And Brianna Lewis just cleans up on the board after the miss there by Wiesman. Well, you can't leave her blo unblocked, that's no. for sure. And that's the thing that was stressed on the scouting report on virtually every Kansas State player. Box out, box out, box out. Here's Yvonne Cook-Taylor. She'll put it up and in. Another three for Yvonne. That's her second three of the night. Just remarkable how she has just decided in the last couple of games to step out that one more step and hit some three-pointers. Effortless. Into Lewis. Lewis denied by Jada Terry. Loses the handle on it. Martin controls, though, for K-State. Now she'll drive, try to throw it inside, but it's Jada Terry. And they're going to say a kick ball. Mm. Mm, an inadvertent kick for sure. It seemed like it. As the ball, they're trying to get the ball inside to Lewis. She basically threw it off the toe of Jada Terry, the left toe. Yeah. Terry may have stuck her toe out there just a little bit, but I don't think she was intending to kick it, but that's the that's the rule, and K-State maintains possession. On the inbounds, going up with it is Williams, and she is fouled. She'll be going to the free throw line to shoot. But Williams oh. has been everywhere, and you have to give her a lot of credit because as a freshman being taken out of the starting role and then having an opportunity to come off the bench earlier this year, she had a couple of freshman of the week honors, but her only double-digit effort of the Big 12 season was against Texas Tech. She's only had one point total over the last three games. And she has come in here, and if she makes this, has 10 points again tonight. The freshman from Topeka, the capital city, she has, like you said, 10 points tonight. And K-State with a two-point lead. Yvonne Cook-Taylor will... Control for Texas Tech to Brewer. She's had a hot hand tonight. Brittany with 10. Tries to bounce pass in the lane, but it's knocked out of bounds by Kansas State. Lady Raiders will throw underneath their own basket. Uh, I think Rasay Caldwell wanted to throw it in from out of bounds on the sideline, but Ivonne Cook Taylor will now do the honors to Caldwell. Caldwell has yet to put up a shot from mm. distance tonight. Tries to get it in to Jada Terry and cannot. K State comes away with a loose ball. Wiesman. Bounce pass in the lane to who else? Brianna Lewis. Missing. Rebound. Goes through the hands of Brittany Brewer. It's loose and on the floor. And it's Ivonne Cook Taylor that comes away with the interception to Rasay Caldwell. Caldwell to Garantis. Garantis puts up a mm. shot. No good. Rebound out of bounds. It'll go to Texas Tech. Boy, a great hustle by both teams. Texas Tech really pushed it down in transition. A nice hustle by Page to get a hand on it. And then it goes off Kansas State at the end. But excellent hustle by both teams. A lot of energy from both teams tonight. Bonnie with a shot on the wing, missing. And there's a jump ball on the rebound with Ayanna McKenzie, who had just checked back in the ball game. Ayanna has big elbows and not afraid to swing them around. In fact, Brenda, a lot of times in practice, they'll have her put pads on because she has a tendency to hit her teammates, and, and that's not the goal in practice. It's not on purpose, but she's just got sharp elbows. Yeah, she's very aggressive. Yes, yeah, so that's what they need. Player. You need to have some of that. Williams goes out to Wiesman. You know, it's, it's amazing how Wiesman, coming off a 34-point game, is held to just two, but Kansas State playing well because they're getting balance. And talking to Jeff Mitty today at shoot-around, he said balance is going to be key. He said, I would have said that against Oklahoma State, too, but we took the 34 points from Wiesman, but we really need everybody to get involved in the scoring and they have tonight eight players scoring for Kansas State already tonight. We say Caldwell trying to throw it down low to Iona McKenzie and it's just a turnover on the Lady Raiders. 
And K-State will get the ball back with a four-point lead and trying to extend that a little bit. They go again into whom else? Brianna Lewis puts up the shot up and over and even, Ayanna McKenzie. And even though they're in a triangle and two, you can't let that easy of a pass go inside to Brianna Lewis, and that's why Whitaker calls the timeout. Bound and put back, but it's been difficult for Texas Tech to keep the ball out of her hands and keep her off the block, and that's why Candy Whitaker calls the timeout to make sure that her team understands what they need to do. A little too much attention being paid to some of the guards that time and opened it up for Lewis inside easily. Kansas State this year, Brenda, 30 points or more in the paint in 15 games, and they average, you know, about 32 and a half points a ball game in the paint, and already tonight they have 26, and we're not even halfway through the third quarter yet. Yeah, and a lot of it's Brianna Lewis, but a lot of it tonight has also been driving into the paint, like right there by Middlebrook. Book and a foul, and let's go to Adam on the sideline to see what Coach Whitaker had to say at that timeout. Yeah, guys, you're right. Uh, Matt Corkery poked into that timeout and said, guys, listen, Lewis Williams have really dominated us down low, really challenging the uh, physicality and the mentality of this team right now, saying we've got to put bodies on them down low. They, as you mentioned, score a lot of points down low, said we cannot allow them to beat us in the paint and expect to stay in this game, guys. Middlebrook uh, converts on the three-point play. The foul was on Brittany Brewer. That was her first, second team foul here in the third quarter. Lady Raiders now trailing by as many as they've trailed all night long by nine points, 42 to 33. Well, to wrap that point up about points in the paint, in this in this conference where Brewer gets a nice shot from the elbow there, in this conference that has so many good big players from Baylor to Texas to Oklahoma State and all around, Kansas State is outscoring their opponents by 10 points in the paint. So it really shows how they've been able to get to the paint in a tough conference that is dominated in the paint. That bucket by Brewer, the first two points of the third quarter by the Lady Raiders. And streaking right down the lane and getting the nice pass across it is Kaylee Page, the 6'3 junior from Wamigo, to give K-State back to a 44-35 lead, a nine-point advantage. And a really nice pa pass by Lewis, who really isn't known for her assist, but it was a nice one there to set up Page. Yvonne Cook-Taylor goes inside to Jada Terry. She slips by Brianna Lewis, but she loses the ball out of bounds, and there's a timeout on the floor. Texas Tech trailing 44-35. You're watching Texas Tech TV. And for Candy Whitaker, her team has been so good at home, they need to get back in their winning ways by being here on their home court. So a lot on the line in this game. We're halfway through Big 12 play. Everybody can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's February, and they are all positioning themselves for the Big 12 tournament coming up in Oklahoma City in March. That was a look at the Big 12 standings brought to you by Plains Capital Bank. Ride with the good guys at Plains Capital Bank. Jada Terry coming away with a loose ball there for the Lady Raiders. They needed that stop to avoid going down by double digits. Let's see if they can convert on the turnover. Ivonne Cook-Taylor missing, and the rebound inside to Brianna Lewis again. And so Kansas State doing a good job stopping paint points for Texas Tech. Brewer had a nice block on this end. She is lined up against Williams inside. Wiesman takes the open three and can't get it to fall for her. The ball just lands in the hands of Jada Terry. Now Laren Brooks on the dribble drive on one on two. Puts it up. No good. Rebound to Middlebrook. And that's what Candy Whitaker had talked to Adam about as she went to the halftime locker room. She likes the energy. She likes the things they're doing defensively. But it's the little things. You can't miss those open layups. Ball goes through the hands of Brianna Lewis. And Grayson Bright will check back in for Laren Brooks and Rasay Caldwell will come in too. And you have to think that the wrist is bothering with say Caldwell. She has only taken one shot in this basketball game and it was left handed in the paint. You can see her right wrist taped up there and, and it's it's obvious that uh, there's a little something more wrong there and she's just not able to get the lift off the shot. But the thing is she's still being face guarded and, and that's taking a defender away which should open up things for Versailles teammates. They've got a chance, especially against this triangle inside, to get some scores. And that's where Jada Terry needs to take her time. Sheeble is in. She'll have some good defensive plays. But Jada Terry can overpower Jessica Sheeble inside if she just takes her time. And this time, she draws the foul and will get a chance to go to the line. But you know, Arella Garantes had four points in the early going. She has only taken five shots in this game. She has not scored 
I don't think since the first quarter. Well, she's another player that's being face guarded by the K-State defense. The way she has scored is when she gets her hands on the ball, she has driven into the lane and she's been active with the basketball. She needs to find a way to get herself the ball so she can create some shots. All right, Jada Terry there at the free throw line and K-State with the basketball. Leading here, 44 to 36. Eight point lead. If they'll try to go inside, and why wouldn't they? They've had a lot of success there. Williams will drive against Brewer, and Brewer cuts her off. Now to Goff, who puts up the shot. May have been partially blocked there by Arilla Garantis, and Jada Terry with a nice rebound for Texas Tech. Right to Brewer. Off the glass, no good. Missing. They fight for the rebound. Garantis comes away with it. She puts up the shot. She misses, but she is fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line shooting two. It's a little bit of a late whistle, but it did look like Shebel had come down on Garantes as she followed through. Good work keeping the basketball alive, and just on the follow through, it looked like Shebel got ball, but then on the follow through may have gotten a little piece of the hand of Garantes. But Garantes, you had just talked about how she hadn't scored since early. That time, that's how you get yourself the ball when they've been keeping it out of your hands. You go get an offensive rebound and hustle and get an extra possession. Lady Raiders are one of their last seven, two of their last nine, and haven't scored for a field goal in the last two minutes and 42 seconds. Garantes does, though, the harder work and hits a couple of free throws, and now she'll take a seat just for a second, and Laren Brooks will come in for her. So K-State's had a couple of empty possessions. Texas Tech has been able to answer with a few. We'll see if Texas Tech can close the gap here or if Kansas State can find a way to score with this group on the floor. Wiesman's not on the floor, nor Lewis right now. Ball goes almost out of bounds. Middlebrook is able to save it, and boy, Shaylin Martin with a great hustle to get back and uh, be able to come up with the ball. Now the shot is blocked by Jada Terry, and she comes up with it and comes down with it. There you see the good hands of the Lady Raiders and Jada Terry. Let's see if they can convert on the possession. Here is Grayson Wright with three. Oh, no, she missed it. Brewer with the rebound. Caldwell puts up the shot, missing from three. The rebound to Shaylin Martin. Boy, a missed opportunity for no Texas Tech. No question. That would have provided some much-needed momentum here in the third quarter and gotten them potentially to within three points. It was ignited with good play by Jada Terry. And then, wow, Middlebrook stays with it, takes it at Terry, who had had a terrific block shot the play before, and just took it right at her. And even when she felt the contact, kept going up through it for a strong finish. And Jada with the foul, that is her third. And you'll just see the way that she just kind of reached in there and reached over with her right hand and just got out of position. And Middlebrook to try to convert on the three-point play and does again for Kansas State. So just like that, the momentum swing was huge there, Brenda. Yeah, the block shot by Terry. Texas Tech doesn't convert on the other end. The hustle play by Kansas State to drive to the rim and then pick up a three-point play. All right, Laren Brooks will give way to Grayson Bright, who's a very athletic and very young freshman. But, boy, she has a bright future here, along with Brittany Brewer, who's another freshman that does not play like one. Brewer on the baseline has a shot partially blocked. Rebound comes down all the way out to Page, and she'll give way to Martin. Boy, they run the fast break well. Down flow underneath, no good. Rebound, though, to Laren Brooks. Laren Brooks, let's see if she holds up and gets for some help, and she does. Good decision, one on three, not good numbers for her. Bright cut off on the baseline, back out to Caldwell. Guarded closely there by Page. There's, there's a good shot at the triangle. You see that Goff or Page is chasing around Caldwell. You see that Laren Brooks is being chased by Middlebrook, and the other three in the middle forming a triangle. And Lisey Caldwell with her first two points of the basketball game. She went up overhanded and used uh, both hands to hit that shot. But it's a needed two for the Lady Raiders if they trail by seven. And she never gave up the basketball so that they couldn't deny her and keep the ball away from her. She just kept her dribble going and drove all the way. Grayson Bright got away with a foul there. That would have been the fourth team foul on Texas Tech. And now let's see. You got three seconds in the lane. There you do. Or no, you have foul on foul. Just, Foul on Lewis. And see the nice dribbling skills by Caldwell was able to get past Page, get past Martin. Watch as she just changes direction behind her back. Jada Terry screens, and Jalen Martin can't get over quickly enough. And 
That's nice work by Rose Caldwell, who's been denied all game long. Look at her right now at half court. They aren't even letting her touch the basketball, and that's the way it's been most of the night. And you saw when she did keep the ball, what she was able to do with it. Brooks trying to dribble her way out of trouble. Looks for help. Goes to Brewer. Brewer will put up the shot and bank it home. It is open tonight here at United Supermarkets Arena. Now, I'm not sure she meant to bank it, but she wanted to get the shot up quickly when she had the chance. It still counts as two, right? That's right. It so, sure does. All right. It's a five-point deficit for the Lady Raiders, who led at the end of one period of play, did not lead at halftime, and have hung in there here in the second half of play and in the third quarter. K-State was on the verge of maybe breaking things open a little bit. Middlebrook will drive the boulevard and hit it. And Jada Terry had no choice but to back off because she has three fouls. And on the inbounds, it's stolen away, but K-State cannot get the shot off before the end of the third quarter. Fourth and final quarter coming up. K-State leads Texas Tech by seven. You are watching Texas Tech TV on Fox. Lewis and, and stop the bleeding in the paint, so to speak. I think so. I think Texas Tech has done an excellent job of keeping the ball out of the hands of Kindred Wiesman and making it difficult for her. The player coming off a 34-point game against Oklahoma State, Kindred Wiesman, is one of nine and only two points. So they're doing the job on her. But Brianna Lewis, terrific inside with 14 points. Corilla Middlebrook has scored off the drive a lot with 10. And Kansas State's bottled up Caldwell, but others have stepped in so far for Texas Tech. Oh, nice rebound there by Jada Terry. And she worked her way around Brianna Lewis after the miss by Grayson Wright and hits it there in the paint. Good, good effort there by the Lady Raiders. And it was a really smart move. And Terry has had her hands full trying to go against much taller, longer Lewis inside. And that time she made a really nice move to get to the rim. Here's Williams, who's had a nice game tonight. She gets it to Brianna Lewis, and Lewis has just had her way with everybody tonight. She is 6'5". She leads them in scoring, leads them in rebounds, and has just had a terrific ball game tonight for Kansas State. And Lady Raiders really missed an opportunity because she was fumbling the ball as she caught it, and the help is supposed to come and double-team her and just let her get, the, get her hands on the ball and score. Wright has it knocked out of her hands and can't recover, and Kansas State on the turnover will try to convert and extend their lead. Here is Martin from three, and she cannot bring it home. But Brianna Lewis with the rebound goes, steps inside the paint, and they can't do anything about it to stop her, and she gets another two. She's so good with either hand. She could score with the right or left effortlessly and did an excellent job once the ball was tipped. Just taking it to the rim instead of making it a tough shot made it as easy as possible. 18 points for her and nine rebounds tonight for Brianna Lewis for Kansas State. Kansas State with its biggest lead of the ball game now, tying it at nine. 53-44. Rose Caldwell with one second on the shot clock will put it up. No good. Rebound to Brianna Lewis and she has a double-double. And Lewis just altered it enough. It was a great drive to the basket by Caldwell. She knew the shot clock was winding down. There was only one second on the shot clock, but Lewis altered it just enough. She wasn't able to score. Brianna Lewis denied on the lane by uh, Jada Terry. The ball goes out of bounds. It'll be the Lady Raiders basketball. Jalen Martin almost got a rebound there with the extra effort, but not enough. She's a player that throughout her career has just been that, that uh, blue-collar worker that makes things happen and got in between two post players for Texas Tech and almost got the got the possession. Caldwell on the left-hand dribble against Middlebrook goes to Garantis who fumbled it and was fortunate that Wiesman wasn't up in her drill to take it away from her. Let's see if Arilla can do something here on the wing. She looks for help. She'll have to go inside. Double team goes to Jada Terry underneath. Terrific play, heady play there. Kind of delayed it and got it to Jada Terry. Well, and I think Garantes knew she wanted to make the pass before Terry was ready for it and just passed it out in front of her, so Terry had to go get it. Middlebrook against Laren Brooks. Goes to Martin. Martin will get it into Brianna Lewis. She'll put up the shot. No good. There's a whistle and a foul. A Brewer tried to bring the double team right as Lewis made that move to her hook shot. It's about all you can do. You could see it as they're in that, that triangle or in the help defense. She tried to step over and help Jada Terry, but got a hand on the arm of Brianna Lewis. On Brewer, that is her second. 
Team foul number one here in the fourth quarter, and Lewis goes to the free throw line and converts. You know, uh, looking over and studying Kansas State staffs or stats before the game, I was just I was really surprised to see that Lewis has only been to the free throw line 58 times in the whole season. They've played 22 games. That means just over two, two and a half attempts per game. And as a post player, you would think she'd be getting to the line a lot more. I think she really relies on that hook shot a lot. Jada Terry has her shot blocked out of bounds by Peyton Williams. The freshman from Topeka has been all over the place tonight. She's had a terrific game. She has. She brings the help defense. She's done her job. She has contributed in so many different ways, and we've seen it mostly offensively, but that's an excellent defensive help. Well, on the inbounds, they're trying to get it to Jada Terry, but you see the length and athleticism there of Brianna Lewis and forced the Lady Raiders to do something different. Had to go out Brings the help defense. She's done her job. She has contributed in so many different ways, and we've seen it mostly offensively, but that's an excellent defensive help. Well, on the inbounds, they're trying to get it to Jada Terry, but you see the length and athleticism there of Brianna Lewis and forced the Lady Raiders to do something different. Had to go out and get the ball to reset the offense. We're only five on the shot clock. they got to make something happen here. Here's Caldwell, and Caldwell, oh, gets bailed out. Oh, they're going to call her for a foul. Yeah, she pushed off. She reached out and tried to clear some space as Middlebrook was all over her. Watch as she makes the move. She actually hits Middlebrook in the face as she Wiper. goes. Yeah, I think she was just trying to clear some space and may really have just been ex accelerating and making a move and really non nothing intentional about it. Inside again to go to Brianna Lewis. She has to kick it back out to, to Williams. Williams on the baseline goes back to Middlebrook. Middlebrook will try to drive. Gives it up to Williams on the baseline. Missing. No good. Rebound. We say Caldwell. Outlet to Arilla Garantis. Garantis will put up the shot. No good. And they call it for a charge. And she just ran right over and got the foul called on her. And, you know, and this is a senior in Wiesman. In good defensive position, really. I mean, she couldn't have been in better defensive position, and that's where, as a freshman, Garante is trying to make something happen. Instead, needs to just pop, uh, jump stop, and shoot over her, or make a step through move. But that's a, a senior defending a freshman, and you saw the result of that. Just lowered her shoulder, and here's Wiesman from outside, going for distance, missing. Rebound though to K State, and they'll reset with a new fresh shot clock. Page now. Well, she'll go for three, and she's got it. And that's just good movement between Page and Martin. They made Brewer move side to side, and she couldn't get there quickly enough, as she was basically defending both of them. Now the Lady Raiders need to make some shots, and that's really been a little bit of a problem here tonight. They're 18 of 46, shooting 39 percent. K State is 25 of 59, 49 percent. There's Jada Terry puts up the shot, trying to go right at. Brianna Lewis, and Lewis commits the foul, but does not get the shot to fall. It was a nice, unselfish play by Brewer, and Jada Terry took a little much, too much time because both defenders were on Brewer, and then by taking that extra dribble, both defenders went to Terry. She needed to get to the rim a little more quickly. It was a nice pass by Brewer, but Jada Terry did pick up the foul in her strong move. Jada now one for three from the free throw line tonight. She's a 49% free throw shooter coming into the contest this evening. I mean, you're desperate for any kind of points right now because you're just trying to close the gap to see if you can make a run in the last couple of minutes of the game. Yeah, certainly a part of her game that Jada Terry needs to improve. Missing rebound, K-State, Middlebrook. She knows what to do with the basketball. It's a very savvy talented, balanced K-State basketball team. Well, they've got veterans. They've got some really nice young players that are contributing. Paige has really come into her own, and she is having a terrific night. Lady Raiders want to talk it over. Candy Whitaker did not like that three by Paige, who now has 13 points. He got down on a knee, and she... <laughs> is breathing hard. Because I think she knows what's coming. He asked the question, and it's obvious she said yes, Brenda. Well, it was just the regular kiss cam. I yeah. think he had a he had an in with the video department because he made his proposal, and it looked like everything worked out. 
Missing is Ivanka Taylor. Brittany Brewer getting a rebound. Cannot get it to fall for. And there's a foul on the ensuing rebound. And you know, Jada Terry goes down. Chuck, you have to be pretty confident that you're yeah. going to get a yes if you're going to do that in front of an entire crowd on the on the uh, big screen. Don't there you? is no doubt. The uh, <laughs> definition of a good lawyer is you know the answer to the question before you ask it. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's one I made sure I knew the answer to the question before I asked it. A foul as Terry goes to the floor hard. You know, Texas Tech has been really good in the fourth quarter this year, especially at home. But Kansas State is a team that when they lead with five minutes to go, they typically are able to hold on to the lead. Well, they needed that. They got the ball out of bounds to Ivonne Cook Taylor, and she brought it home from three. Another three for Bonnie here today. Well, that's a big shot because yeah. Texas Tech needs to chip into this. Kansas State is actually 45 and one under Jeff Mitty when they lead with five minutes to go. That's what a tall order this is. But you hit a couple of three pointers and you're right back in it. And that's something that they've been able to do in a three second violation called on Kansas State on Brianna Lewis. And let's see if they can convert on the turnover and bring it down to single digits. It's an 11 point lead right now for K-State with 417 to go. Well, Cook Taylor has three three-pointers, yeah. and the only other person is Ola Bodie with a three. Caldwell and Brooks have really been defended well by the Kansas State defense. Yvonne had the ball knocked out of her hand, and she lost it, and Brittany, excuse me, I say Brittany Martin, Shaylin Martin, uh, gets the ball for K-State. Brittany Martin is sitting over there on the bench for Texas Tech as a grad assistant, but she has uh, exhausted her eligibility. Yes, she has. Big 12 Player of the Year last year at Oklahoma State, now a grad assistant. And Laren Brooks just gets a little piece of the hand of Kendra Wiesman, who Wiesman coming off a 34-point game is 1 for 10 from the field today. And you, that's how off she is. She is a tremendous free throw shooter, an 88% free throw shooter, and this is that one, which sometimes goes to show you, you can have an incredible night like she did at Oklahoma State, and then has gotten a lot of defense, paid attention to her today, and it's been the rest of the Kansas State team that has stepped up here on the road. Well, she converts on the second one to make it a 61-49 advantage. Kansas State piling up the points in the paint tonight. They have 40 points in the paint tonight. 40 of their 61. So they have really made their money inside tonight. Yeah, and that's higher than their average. They, they 33. Usually, yeah, they, they have 33 points, but about 47% of their total offense, and they are well above that tonight. Foul is on Kaylee Page. 349 to go, and so you're going to have to make some hay here real quick from a Texas Tech standpoint. 13 foul on K-State. Neither team has been in the bonus tonight. Neither team has gotten to five fouls in a quarter. You know, and, and a lot of it, they're both playing zone or some variation of a zone, so not a lot of fouling except when the ball has gone into the paint. Here's Brittany Martin, catches the ball after losing it, puts up the shot, no good. And when they look at the shot clock, they're, they're going to see a shot chart, a number, number, number of uh, points in there. Yeah, Brewer that time tried tried to turn, had a good look at it, well defended though by K-State. And Kansas State, the, the clock is on their side right now, so they're just going to take their time and use the entire shot clock. Why not? Missing rebound, Jada Terry. And Jada's played hard tonight. And she's had a tough opponent though with Brianna Lewis, who has 19. Here's Laren Brooks going inside the lane. She misses. Rebound, Terry puts up. She can't find it. Had an awkward shot and look mm -hmm. at it. And a rebound to Kansas State. Yeah, just tough to go up over the length of Brianna Lewis inside. Wiesman to Page. And they're doing this tonight without one of their big freshman players who has done a tremendous job here tonight. Yeah, Eternity Willock, who has been uh, started the last game, we got her first start against Oklahoma State, is home with an illness. I don't know if she's watching or not, but we hope that she recovers quickly. But her teammates have played awfully well without her. But I've had a chance to watch Kansas State several times this year, and Eternity Willock has done a terrific job as a 6'4 freshman complimenting Lewis inside. And, uh, you know, remarkable that they have enough balance that that she really hasn't been missed tonight. When you add her to this mix, they are a very strong team. There's Ivan Cook-Taylor with a running layup at it. 
And she hits the bucket with 2.15 to go. But, boy, time is not on your side. You're going to have to try to figure out a way to get a turnover, or get a rebound, then get some threes because it's going to be away. And here's a turnover. Arilla Garantis intercepts the pass to see if she can go coast to coast. She cannot, and that is really the story of this ball game tonight. Yeah, a lot of missed opportunities around the rim for Texas Tech that would have allowed them to close the gap. And Jeff Meddy wants to talk it over. He wants to set the deck and just kind of say to his troops, hey, let's calm down a little bit. No reason to get into a big hurry. You got a 10-point lead. Let's milk some clock. And the Sooners at 6. Get your tickets right now on TexasTech.com or call 806-742-TECH during normal business hours. All right, now you just got to make something happen here from a turnover standpoint and try to get some quick threes to give yourself a chance at the end. A frenetic defense by the Lady Raiders now. Yeah, try to trap, maybe get a foul. And when you do that, when you have your player like Jada Terry come way out, it's going to mm -hmm. open up the lane, and Williams was wise enough to see that, and she drove right down and got an easy two. And we've really seen both the experience and the young talent for Kansas State contributing in this game. Here's Ivanka Taylor. She's put this team on her back tonight and has 17 points now on the basketball game for the Lady Raiders. K-State will work it quickly back, but we're getting down to a minute 15, and it's a 10-point game. Wiesman between the circles guarded closely by Laren Brooks, and Laren reached in and committed a foul. And on Texas Tech, that will be the fifth, so that will put K-State in the bonus, but putting them at the free throw line, and they hope to the Lady Raiders that Wiesman continues to struggle from the line. Wiesman on the year, 88%. She's gone to the line 65 times. She's actually gone to the line more than Brianna Lewis this year. And she nails it. Which is pretty remarkable. But she is a player that has the ball in her hands a lot and makes things happen. And is a calming and steadying force. And didn't have a great shooting night tonight, but she is a tremendous senior point guard for this team. And the fact that they've been able to play so well with her struggling just kind of shows what a good all-around team they have. Two big free throws there by Wiesman to give K-State a 65-53 lead. Caldwell to Brooks. Laren not afraid to put up the three, but didn't there. Hesitated. That will go out to Arilla Garantis. She'll put up the three. Missing. Rebound to Kansas State. And that, too, has been a story here tonight. All night long. One and done from a shot standpoint for the Lady Raiders. Yeah, they rebound battle won by Kansas State. They've out-rebounded the Lady Raiders 41-33. We've talked about the points in the paint. 42-18 to 18 in favor of Kansas State. They just got themselves more high percentage shots tonight and converted than Texas Tech did. That'll be a whistle and a foul. I believe it's going to be on Ivanka Taylor, and it is. And she just was not able really frankly to get out of the way and then when she was in the way she said well I'll go ahead and give a shoulder to it and Carilla Middlebrook will go to the free throw line Middlebrook is pretty salty at picking up fouls on her drive to the basket because she she initiates a lot of contact as she gets into the lane she's a 5'7 junior from Blue Springs Missouri averages 11 points a ball game in Big 12 play and leads them in assists second shot no good we're under 25 seconds to play. Lady Raiders will lose their fifth in a row here tonight to Kansas State. Outlet is intercepted by Middlebrook, and I think that will do it. Coach Jeff Mitty just tell him to hold on and say there's, there's no reason to score anymore. You've scored it off. 65-53 is going to be our final record. And a, a very good effort by Kansas State coming in here. Texas Tech's been so good at home. Lost their first Big 12 game to Texas. Now their second Big 12 game at home. And you have to give a lot of credit to the balance 